This is the pre-lab discussion for experiment number three, synthesis of salicylic acid from wintergreen oil. This molecule as depicted here is the methyl salicylate or wintergreen oil. It has a hydroxy group coming off this aromatic ring and it has an ester on it. If I were to heat this up with sodium hydroxide and then follow that up with a sulfuric acid workup, I actually can convert sal methyl salicylate into salicylic acid. Notice my methoxy group here is now a hydroxy group. Let's look at the mechanism for this chemical reaction. If I take methyl salicylate and I put in some sodium hydroxide, a strong base, the sodium hydroxide will dissociate into ions. The hydroxide anion would like to form a bond between any acidic protons, and thus methyl salicylate has a very acidic proton here, and it forms the sodium salt of that. So if I continue refluxing, my hydroxide anion is also going to react with any positive or reactive sites. And it turns out this carbon right here, attached to the carbonyl and to the methoxy group in the ester, is very electropositive. That's because I have an oxygen pulling electrons away from the carbon, and I have a second oxygen pulling electrons away from the carbon. I can also draw resonance structures by moving those electrons up to oxygen, making that proton partially positive. So my hydroxide ion forms a bond to that carbonyl carbon, pushing those electrons up into oxygen, because I can't only have four bonds to carbon. I form this tetrahedral structure, and then when those electrons do come back down to form the double bond in our mechanism, one of these two bonds has to break, either the methoxide bond or the hydroxide bond. If I break the hydroxide bond, we just go back to form the ester. But if I break the methoxide bond, I actually form then the sodium salt of my ester. And this is the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid. So I have the disodium salt here. All I have to do now is do some more acid-base chemistry, throw in some sulfuric acid, and protonate both of those oxygens to form salicylic acid. We're going to perform this experiment following the standard 10 phases of an organic chemistry experiment. Planning and preparation. I'm going to collect that, organize all my glassware and chemicals. I'm going to read the end of the book sections on operating procedures. Specifically, we're going to talk about reflux reactions, OP number 7. A reflux reaction serves three main purposes. One, it provides energy for the reaction in the form of heat. We can maintain a constant temperature throughout the reaction because we're just at the boiling point of the solvent, which is going to be water in our experiment. And we maintain constant volume because we have a condensation column set up there to return any vapors back to the reaction vessel. We're also going to review several skills that we've already done, vacuum filtration, recrystallization, and melting point analysis. For safety, we're going to work in the hood, we're going to wear goggles, and we're going to wear gloves for this experiment. We are using two very strong acids and a base. So here's our chemical reaction process. I'm going to set up the reaction apparatus as described in the text, and that is shown here on the right here. I have a hot plate. I have an aluminum block for heat transfer. I have a small conical reaction vessel. And attached to that is actually my condenser. And it's a water-cooled condenser. So it's a double-lined tube. The outside tube, I can send water in and then go up the outside, and it'll go out the top here. That's so I can cool the inner tube here, which is open to my reaction vessel and also open to the atmosphere. So as we start to boil the liquid down here in my reaction vessel, the vapors start to move up the inner tube. As they get chilled by the water, they tend to recondense and go back down, maintaining constant volume. 
we're going to add our reaction components to the reaction vessel, a methyl salicylate, sodium hydroxide, and a boiling chip to help maintain constant and even boiling. We're going to allow this to reflux for 30 minutes, meaning we're going to boil it for 30 minutes. Then we're going to cool the reaction to room temperature, and then we're going to add our sulfuric acid to form the salicylic acid. At that point, we're going to collect our precipitate by vacuum filtration, but we're not going to isolate it and weigh it. We're going to go right on and recrystallize it first, so don't calculate any yields at this point. We're going to recrystallize the crude product in boiling water. We're going to calculate the minimum amount of water used for recrystallized based on our theoretical yield, depending on how much methyl salicylate we actually weigh out. Then we're going to collect our recrystallized product by vacuum filtration, wash it with some water, and dry to constant mass. At that point, we're going to do similar analysis and metrology that we did last week in the last experiment. We're going to calculate our final weight. We're then going to conduct melting point analysis both on the recrystallized product and a mixture of recrystallized product and commercial salicylic acid made from benzene. Number seven, calculations. We're going to actually include those in your lab report. Document results, those are going to be included in my lab notebook, the notes that I've been taking. And formulate conclusions, that's going to be included in your lab report. So here's the lab report. Comment on the safety precautions and handling of the or chemicals used in this experiment. Calculate the theoretical yield, show your calculations. Estimate the amount of solvent hot water required for recrystallization. Calculate the percent yield, and then list the key observations and conclusions for the four experimental procedures, reflux, acidification, recrystallization, and our melting point analysis. List sources of yield loss, and do the end of lab exercises one and four from the lab manual. And then when you're done, submit that as a single PDF file to the Blackboard site.